Uh, hi, everyone. Um, the aircon is really too cold. I've been sitting here for two, two hours, yeah? <laughs> it's freezing. Um, so I'm talking about um, more pragmatic dreams. Um, well, this, I'll have a quick one before the break. Um, being pragmatic and uh, being dreamy, I think this is a very um, oxymoron <laughs> combination that makes us wonder if they can go hand in hand. Um, in my book, um, um, it's uh, written in, in, in Chinese. And don't worry, it is not a propaganda tool, <laughs> as somebody might thought. Because every time like, uh, they, they, somebody would see that oh, the, word, the three words, Lee Kuan Yew appears, people might, might have um, different uh, response. One is saying that uh, it must be like, a, you know, Pai Ma Pi. What do you call Pai Ma Pi in Chinese, uh, in English? Uh, curry favoring. <laughs> Either that or it's PAP bashing, but uh, it's not. Uh, anyway, um, in my book, I have um, talked about, um, touched upon this um, notion of Singapore dream. And one part of it that I have mentioned was, uh, hello, was a write-up um, that I've read in a newspaper a few years back. Um, let me share about this, is that this, this writer, there was this writer from South Korea, um, she, she started a project uh, on dream collection. So she quit her job and she, she went around the world to collect dreams. So she went to different places to interview people about um, what, it, what it her dreams about, and she was inspired by them. So that she, she said that um, even in those remotest places, the poorest places, they have big dreams, like um, changing the world, <laughs> um, or, or changing the living conditions for the country people. Then, of course, when it's a worldwide project, so she will come to Singapore too. And so when she, she was asked about what um, she thought about uh, the dreams of Singaporeans, at first she was reluctant to say, but somehow um, she still replied that um, uh, this, this, the dreams of the Singaporeans were most of the least inspiring ones, which is um, that most of them she, she has interviewed talked about um, upgrading from HDB to condo. So that was most of the dreams. I mean, this is a practical dream, nothing wrong with that. But it's that comparing those um, big, bigger dreams of changing the world or want to build, become a build, the next Bill Gates, that it seems smaller. Um, well, um, maybe if she's here today, she might change her mind about Singaporean dreams. Um, well, trying to explain this phenomena or, or to, to explain like, uh, why, 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 why the overemphasis on materialism, um, this Korean lady thought that um, at that time, uh, that life in Singapore is actually too stable and uh, too comfortable that we Singaporeans need not have to change anything. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but um, absolutely uh, not quite right for me. Um, I mean, life in Singapore is uh, relatively comfortable, only if we earn comfortable wages. And, um, and I don't think that we have reached um, the perfect level to become a utopia as yet. Um, far from it, we can see that uh, there, are more, there, there, there are more discontent uh, around us and uh, you know, people have been like, um, being uncomfortable, um, voicing their, uh, their unhappiness over, um, over political situation, over, over m many other things in Singapore here. Um, and I think uh, most of the problem is that we do not feel empowered to change or we have given up, given up our rights to do so. Um, I mean, it has become a very prominent rhetoric that um, in our culture over the past 50 years and nation building, we, we were taught, we have been told that we have to be pragmatic in order to survive. And all these years, our state and our nation building are all based on fear and not passion and not about cultural pride. From the country's perspective, I mean, we have to, be, to remain um, competitive. We have been told that we have to be competitive. Um, if not, we will be overtaken by, you know, by, by, by other countries in the region, by China, by Malaysia, by whatever. Um, so if not, we will, be, we will turn into a fishing village. Our men will become construction workers elsewhere and women become mates in other countries. So, and yes, so we, 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 we I mean, the government will become like, um, think of all these strategies to make Singapore competitive. Okay, so gambling can generate revenue for the economy and for the government, so we bring in casinos and car racing to attract the wealthy tourists. I mean, never mind about the social ills. 
I mean, these are um, pragmatic strategies, but, but are these moving us closer to the kind of ideal home that we dream of? I mean, that's a question that uh, we have to think about. But another thing is, I, I, I'm, as I um, prepare this um, presentation, I was also thinking that being pragmatic actually doesn't mean letting go of values and principles that we have held. And being idealistic doesn't mean cutting, out, cutting off from reality and to build castles in the air. Uh, it also doesn't mean that we can find our dreams to the most individualistic and the smallest boundary that we could roam in. And let's look at our, I mean, talking about pragmatic and dreams, let, look, let's look at our national pledge. Do you still remember the national pledge that we have uh, recite every morning when we were a student? How, do, how does it go again? We the citizens of Singapore, da 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 da. <laughs> so, um, however, like um, this pledge that we have recited from young to build a democratic society based on justice and, e and equality, however, ironically, has been described by Mr. Lee Kuan Yew as a an idealistic and highly fallen idea. And he said that it is dangerous to allow such ideas to go undemolished and to mislead Singapore. But who says that pragmatism and idealism are a dichotomy that cannot go hand in hand? And I think that looking at the pledge again, I don't think building a democratic society is an out-of-touch idealistic dream. And the pledge has a lot of pragmatism to it. You still remember? Say that, why, why do we need to build a democratic society? So as to achieve happiness, prosperity, and progress for our nation as one united people, regardless of race, language, or religion, right? So um, I'm suggesting that while this pledge has become a white elephant and a pretentious statement for a long time, I think it is a very good example of our pragmatic dreams. Um, to combine this dream and the result we want to achieve. So instead of brushing it off, I think our national pledge should still be our inspiration and guiding principles that have been, I mean, our society have been for too long. So, um, so at, on, on, on this note, I think that we should revisit our pledge again and really think about how we want to realize um, this dream laid down by our forefathers. That's all I have to share. Thank you.